The grim-faced hunters of the American Hunters Association face many dangers on their mission to exterminate the paranormal horrors that plague parts of the world. They hunt down malevolent beings in exchange for bounties, all the while fending off attacks from dangerous creatures like the hives and meatheads. There are even threats from within the organization itself, yet the most common creature the hunters come across are the hordes of reanimated dead that are referred to as grunts. These partially decayed human bodies shamble about aimlessly unless provoked or in the presence of live prey, at which point they will attack their target with a relentless fury driven by animalistic instincts. However, as with everything else related to the Louisiana incident, there may be more going on beneath the surface than we realize. The following is taken from the entry in the Grunt's Law by an unnamed researcher it is quite difficult to perform any typological analysis of the Louisiana incident. I'm starting to think these events may have been the beginning of the zombie stories we have today. It certainly matches the pattern. Some kind of deadly infection hits a settlement, almost wipes out the whole population, and then the dead rise from their graves in order to feast on the living. Though this is the only zombie story I've heard where the zombies take up weapons, torches and blades in most cases, to wield against the living. The old adage holds, truth is always far stranger than fiction. It seems like the hunters of this era were simply calling them grunts. There are conflicting reports of course, but the material I have found so far appears to be talking about what's probably a slow moving and mostly human creature, possibly the victim of a viral infection or controlled by some kind of greater spirit or lure. The theory that grunts are controlled was originally founded by Reinhard Winkler during the only recorded autopsy of a grunt. We find a lot of information from his diary entries during this autopsy, yet a lot is still unknown about the grunts. However, Dr. Winkler performed the only known autopsy on a grunt, and this gives us a good understanding about these creatures, yet it also leaves us asking more questions. Winkler was aided in his venture by a man named Father Nico and his disciples. Not much is known about Father Nico, yet from Winkler's diary we can ascertain that he was a devoutly religious man, and that he believed faith was the only effective weapon against the encroaching darkness. Besides the obvious external degradation to the grunt's bodies, Winkler uncovered a dark and distressing truth during his autopsy. Winkler found severely torn muscle fibres throughout the entire body of his test specimen leading to the theory that the human consciousness inside the grunt's body is still alive and still aware, unable to stop their body degrading into the gruesome forms we see, their utter helplessness while watching their body commit acts of evil, able to do nothing to regain control of their decaying body, is truly horrifying. Winkler writes, there is no significant anatomical change as far as I can tell. It is very likely these things are still fundamentally human. Torn muscle fibre all around suggests resistance to motor. There was a brown stain here. His handwriting gets progressively worse. As if the body itself is controlled by some invisible consciousness against its will. Against its will has been struck through once. It's just a theory. But maybe this thing, thing, has also been crossed out. The person is still alive inside. Despite the state of decomposition, I believe there might be an actual person trapped in this body. If this indeed is the case, it must feel like a personal hell. Witnessing yourself as a monster, of course. If that's the case, the obvious question is, what is controlling these grunts? As the days pass, Winkler discovers more insight into the anatomical makeup of the grunts. It is unclear whether the specimen he is working on is truly dead. Father Nico believes it is not, and his wards are what is keeping the grunt separated from the dark powers that control it. Winkler, seeing the bullet wounds initially believes that the grunt is dead, and puts no faith in Father Nico's belief. However, as the days go on he becomes less certain, and it is evident in his writing he is becoming more disturbed by what he finds. Open the ribcage today. Saw it was buzzing. Buzzing is again crossed out. Moving. All the internal organs, with the curious exception of the heart, seem to be at least structurally intact. Something wrong with the heart seems deformed, deformed is scribbled through, spherical in form. 
pulsing, but not pumping for lack of a better term. Even in death, it keeps on pulsing in a dark, sticky fluid. I had to check the walls to see if they're intact, fearing that dark presence is making its move again. But no, this is some kind of primal reflex. Leads me to think it's still alive, or dead. I postulate that the fluid inside the heart itself may be causing the disease, or vice versa. Too tired. Need sleep. Need to focus. Need more time. We know that this fluid is linked to the rifts, and it is also what causes the zombification. However, we are still unclear about how this gets into the human body. I discussed this in my previous video about the plague, yet it would appear that greed and poor judgement have something to do with it. Men making and selling concoctions as cures apparently derived from the liquid helped the plague spread quicker than it may have done naturally. What we can say for certain is that there is a direct link between the power of the rifts and the grunts. Father Nico and his disciples established and maintained wards to not only keep the grunts out of their laboratory, but to separate the specimen from whatever nefarious power was controlling it. Having separated the grunt from the force that keeps it animated for some days, Winkler begins to see changes in the creature that were not there before. He writes, A breakthrough. Turns out the heart is more of a nest. The heart seems to be pumping some sort of nutritional fluid into the veins, which in return house tiny larvae. Is it pumping insects? Need samples. Something else I haven't caught before. The circulatory system now seems venerated, like the wings of a horsefly. I'm not quite sure this was not the case before. The specimen appears to be changing, evolving. How did I miss these changes? All that venation, and there is no blood. Is the black liquid its blood? For what purpose? I don't know. It whispers, has been scratched out furiously. I am exhausted, eyes burning, head buzzing. Where in the nine hells is William? And now the specimen seems to have developed a new post-mortem reflex. Semi-regular spasms. It is as if the chest is going to explode. The grunts are almost in. We have to ask ourselves, how are these changes possible, as no other grunts appear to change like this? Well, we know that the sculptor is the being responsible for the creation of the monsters in the bayou monsters such as the meatheads and hives, so it would make sense that the sculptor is changing the grunt before Winkler's eyes. However, each of the sculptor's creations display unique characteristics, and they each clearly have a purpose within the sculptor's plan that is yet to be revealed. Yet, the grunts display no unique characteristics beyond using the occasional weapon. However, I believe the sculptor is behind the creation of the grunts and the reason they possess no unique attributes is because they are in fact the clay for the sculptor to mould. He turns them into these monstrous creatures. After all, don't the changes Winkler is witnessing sound like the grunt is transforming into a hive? The interview of Ada Ruth, whose mother was the first hive, gives us the details of how insects and a nest explode from her mother's chest. Winkler notices larvae in his specimen's veins, the same way larvae would have been inside Mrs. Ruth. The specimen's heart is pulsing like it's going to explode, the same way Ada Ruth's mother chest exploded. Whilst the grunts might be seen as little more than mindless zombies by some, we know they are a direct result of the sculptor's meddling in our world, and they have a purpose beyond simply wandering the bayou waiting for prey. The terrifying truth is that the person's consciousness is still alive and aware, an unwilling passenger inside their own body, controlled by the sculptor, waiting to be transformed into something far worse. The last entry in Winkler's diaries showed that his mental state is beginning to decline, or perhaps he is starting to succumb to the influence of the sculptor. He may even be infected with the plague. Whatever the cause of the buzzing in his head and his burning eyes, it is believed he perished, along with Father Nico and everyone else involved in his research. There is some speculation to this. After all, the bayou is full of mysteries.